Welcome to this week's furniture makeover. My name is Sarah of Vintage and Painted. It is a six drawer dresser, mid-century in style. She is gorgeous, had some lovely curves and look at those pulls, original to the piece. But she was a massive pain in the bum. If you're returning, hello guys. If you are new, stick around for all the juicy details. This piece was $30 at a reseller near me. She had some overstock and wanted to get rid of it. You guys, you see the side, the whole side was missing. It wasn't originally missing, but it came off when I took it out of the car. So I needed to get a new piece of ply to replace that. I will not get my money back. It is a smaller six drawer dresser it's not really a name brand it's a good piece of furniture it's mcm style which is popular right now but if i pour a lot of money into this i'm not going to get that kind of a return out of it so i'm going to put the side back on it we're going to do a paint stain combo because we are missing some pieces of veneer i am not a furniture restorer i do restore some pieces i like to restore solid pieces and I don't replace veneer very often. So I don't have a bunch of veneer here. I'm not gonna run out and buy a bunch of veneer. It can be kind of expensive. All that to say, I'm going to be making the repairs on the front with Bondo, painting uh, parts of it and staining the rest of it. So if you wanna see how I do that, stick around and let's get into it. I'm using my star bond clear in thin CA glue just put parts of the veneer I'm gonna have to fix that with some bondo okay so at this point I really did think that I was gonna be able to save most of the veneer and I had glued down as much as I could and bondoed the parts that I was missing veneer from. Sanded everything down with a fairly high grit. I think it was like a hundred just to get everything smooth. So as I was sanding you guys this must have, uh, well, I know I got it out of her garage basement thing, so it was cool and damp in there, but I think it was very dried out, very, it had a lot of dry rot, and when I sanded, there you go, sorry, it was blurry, but the veneer was just kept coming away, and I tried, did try to glue it in several places, but it just kept coming away and coming away, and I couldn't guarantee that once I sold this piece to a person that it wouldn't happen to somebody in the future. And uh, so I ended up stripping back the veneer from the front. So along that you see the piece, it's upside down. So this is the base and along the strip in the middle, it, the veneer also came away. Now I am just taking the piece of ply that I got from Lowe's, just tracing out where I need to cut on the piece of ply. Always using, now I've learnt my lesson, <laughs> painter's tape to cut along. It does help it not to chip as much or splinter as much. Just want to give some love to my members. You guys are amazing and blow me away. I love you to pieces. Thank you so much for your support and your encouragement. If you have maybe been considering or you're curious about my memberships, you can click the link below and there's a video that tells you all about it. All right, you guys, let's get back to the video.
Now that everything is glued and stapled down, I am taking my sander and I'm rounding off the edge. The other side, the original side, the veneer on that is rounded off. I, that's just the design, the way that they did it. So I am just simply matching the new side to the old side. I'm stripping back the top using 150 grit sandpaper. For those of you who don't know and you're curious why I'm using an orbital pad on my surf prep. Well, I get these from my local Harbour Freight and the price is pretty reasonable. I can pick it up in a pinch and I just don't see a need to spend the extra money actually <laughs> on those little square pads. These work perfectly fine and also when I am sanding like a corner, the extra overhang of the pad to, does sanding twofold. It sands the flat edge and also the, the edge on the side if you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything is going back to bare wood on the top and the top two drawers for a stain and then I'm going to be painting the rest. Of course, I like to smooth everything out with a scuff sand on the parts that I will be painting and sanding inside the drawers to get rid of any residue or whatever that was, that bright pink thing. <laughs> To reduce squiggles, I like to do my final sand on a higher grit piece of sandpaper. 220 is usually good enough, I find I don't really need to go much higher than that. And I sand it by hand. The base of the drawer was split, the, side, the slide was still good enough to use. I just piled on some glue in there, ended up clamping it, and you didn't see it because it was just an awkward angle, <laughs> but I actually ended up stapling, or using my nail gun rather, along the base, along the bottom there where you, well, just along the bottom to glue this piece, to staple and glue this piece back together and it works perfectly. Okay, you have seen me use clear shellac before. I like to use it on occasion, especially when I'm doing a dark pink color. Rather than using white to prime, I use the shellac to hold all the tannins in to prevent bleed through and also just give me a barrier between the wood and the paint. That's all glued up and dried now, nice and strong. And I'm going to stick that back in and shellac that as well. 
Now shellac does give it a bit of a shiny surface, so I'm not going crazy on it. I'm just lightly sanding just to give the paint something to adhere to. This paint is gorgeous. It is all natural. There's so much to love about this paint, you guys. You, if you've been watching any of my videos and I've used Debbie's paint in it, you know how much I gush over this paint. Well, if you want to check it out for yourself and would like to order some paint, I have an affiliate link below. And if you would use that link to order your paint, that would be amazing. I would love you forever. <laughs> And uh, you, she has many more products as well. Waxes, painting powders, I mean, everything. Patinas, you guys, you should click the link, check it out. If you haven't already and you're enjoying this video and getting some value out of it, why don't you hit subscribe? I do put videos out like this often and would love to have you along on the journey. I am doing my first layer going in with a cross hatching motion, getting some really great texture. You get great texture anyway with this clay based paint, but just going in a cross hatching motion just ensures that I am really getting some good texture in there. And I end up doing two coats of the paint, not sanding in between because I want the texture. I was doing so well. <laughs> uh, I was trying to make sure it went straight and then I went off course a little bit there. <laughs> and of course I go ahead and trim out the sides as well as the top of the drawers. I only really do this guys if it's not going to scrape on the drawer above it. If there is a small gap, which you can see around the drawer right there, that there is a small gap, it's not going to scrape. So I'm good to paint the drawer tops. Otherwise, I just stand back and I poly the top of the drawer. This is a great shot actually to show you, see how much lighter it dries. It is going to be somewhere between the color it is when it's wet and dry. When you seal it, it brings back that richness and the darkness of the color. I am using Minwax. It is honestly, it's a mixture of dark walnut and I think I also threw in there just a little bit of um, ebony that I had and special walnut I had little dregs in the bottom of a can. So <laughs> I just combined them all into the one can and that's the color that I'm using on the top of the dresser as well as the top two drawers as well. This is the only clip I have of me <laughs> sealing it all in. I am using Minwax flat. Now you can put a polyacrylic, a water-based polyacrylic on top of an oil-based stain as long as you wait the recommended amount of drying time. I 
Okay, you guys, it kept throwing things at me and I had to keep pivoting. The veneer was missing in some spots and uh, I did want to sand it all back and stain it, but it had other plans. The veneer was rotting and falling off, so I adjusted and pivoted. Sure, I could have run out and bought veneer, but uh, quite frankly, veneer is expensive right now. I didn't have any in my shop and it's not really something that I have done in the past that I would have stock in the shop. I want to be real with you guys. Can I be real with you for just a second? A lot of times make you do with stuff that I've got and not always in a position just to run out and buy everything new for every piece that I make over. I'm really proud of it. I have done the very best that I can. I like the stain and DIY paint textured combo. It's beautiful. The wood grain on the top drawers and the top is gorgeous. I ended up sending that back for a second time, you guys, and going with stain. I originally, I don't know if I'll drop it in, the video but originally I did a sort of wash on it and it wasn't exactly what I wanted and the stain is is exactly what I wanted so <laughs> uh, I like to try a water base option first before I go the stain which is oil based because uh, more and more you guys I'm leaning away from doing oil based stuff um, just the cleanup is a real hassle and you know, I just, yeah, want it for better for me, better for the environment, <laughs> sticking with water-based products. Okay, I know you guys are my people. You have made it this far in the video. I love you to pieces. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you hit a thumbs up? That would be amazing. And drop me a comment. What do you think? Would you have done something differently? Would you have pivoted like I did or is there another option that you would have taken? Here's the before. She was pretty rough you guys. <laughs> Scratched up, missing side and here she is today. I did end up having to repaint that middle drawer on the left for some reason. I guess I had bumped it, it annoyed me, and I couldn't sell it like that. So I ended up taking it after this video, after the sexy after shots. <laughs> I ended up taking it out, repainting it twice, putting more two coats of the poly on it and putting it back and so now she's good to go. Okay, you guys, I am, okay, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, I just want to take a second to be real with you guys, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> if I can just be real with you guys for a second, this is like the third time that I've done this part, but I feel like it needs to be said. <sighs> okay, I always strive to be really honest with you guys. No, I, okay. MCM pieces generally are doing well. <laughs> I have an audience today. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> okay. This piece. If you're in the mood to binge watch a few more of my videos, then why don't you click on this and I will see you on the next piece. Bye.